Hi guys, Matt from ESU, and today we are going to be talking about the physical output configuration tab um, under the Loke Programmer. So basically, how to turn your lights on and off, and um, how to set change the settings to adjust your your lighting effects and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, it's, there's a lot of information here, but um, only because we have so many features that are available with this. So let's get started right away. And we are in, it doesn't matter which file you have open, but um, we are in the decoder tab and then under function outputs. And you can see here right away, there's a lot of light outputs here. Now we're not talking about function buttons right now. We're simply just talking about the physical output that you have something wired to electrically. Um, in many cases, I'd probably say most cases, this is a light of some sort, whether it be an LED or a bulb. Um, it could be a smoke unit. It could be a, um, a coupler. Again, anything that you're going to control electrically uh, with a function button, um, this would be where you would turn it on. Um, wouldn't even necessarily have to be with a function button. It could also be triggered by a sound that's playing. It could be triggered by, uh, it could be an input that's triggered by a chuff or something like that. So um, a cam, a lot of that is, again, if it's electrically connected to the decoder uh, by a physical wire, uh, then this is where you would set that up. So let's get started right away. You see we have a lot of them here. Let me work my way down because uh, on ESU decoders, we label our outputs as front light, rear light, and then aux one, two, three, four, on and on and on. So um, it's not, even though you, you have this is considered an output it's not considered the first output it's considered front light one and you have rear light and then you start with your aux one aux two aux three now as i've been going over this most of you are probably looking at this thing and well that doesn't make sense there's a front light one and a front light two rear light one rear light two so what this is doing is it's giving me the control over the first four outputs. Remember, you know, there's four of them here. Front light one, front light two, aux one, aux two. So even though I'm saying the number four, um, we're talking to aux two because the first two are front light and rear light. So, uh, so again, just to kind of go back to what we were talking about, there's a front light one and a front light two. So what does that mean? So essentially, we are able to talk to the same output, the same light that might be wired to this output in two different ways. So why would I use that? So say we have the front headlight of, a, um, of an F unit, and sometimes we want that light to be on steady, and other times we want that same LED maybe to be a Mars light. So under front light one, we want that to be just set up as a front headlight. Um, not a, we just want it to be able to be turned on and off, um, not any type of Mars feature or anything like that. In this case, we, we just want it on and off. And if we look here, we can see that on F0, one and forward, that light, front light one, is active. So if we press F0 on our throttles, then the front headlight will come on. If we press it again, it'll turn off, as long as we're in forward, according to our mapping. So um, I'm going to come down here, and um, since aux3 isn't going to be used in my example, I want to unmap that. And I'm going to actually map front light 2 to this button, so the F5 button. So now we go back to our function output screen, or physical output configuration screen. And now you notice front light 2 is highlighted. It's black. It's not faded out gray. When you see that, that's telling you that it's active within the function mapping chart. Um, so just that's why some are highlighted and some are not. So now we want to set this up. Front light 2, we're going to call it the front Mars light or the Mars light. Let's just keep it simple. So now that it's set up, it'll, it'll show you here. It'll also show you under the function mapping table. So it's good to give it a name. That way you know exactly what it is that's wired to. So going back to function output tab, we now want to change my lighting effect. So uh, this would be... Uh, Mars so we want to look for Mars light and now we have that set up um, we can 
if, if this is an LED, we want to make sure we have this set to LED mode because that uses pulse width modulation. An LED and a bulb light up differently. A bulb, the more electricity that it has, the more voltage that it receives, the brighter that it'll get until it turns off because you put too much to it and you've blown your bulb. So um, an LED, while it will do that same thing, that's a different uh, discussion about resistance and uh, you know topping off how much voltage can be received by the, the light. Um, we definitely want LED mode if it is an LED because an LED will simply come on at full brightness or off at full brightness. What happens is um, we, we modulate the voltage that goes to an LED because the faster that you flash the voltage to it, you can get it to look like it's dimming or create lighting effects. So if it's an LED, we want to use that pulse width modulation and turn that LED mode on. Um, so we can adjust the brightness of that light. In this case, we're going to leave it all the way up because we want a nice bright Mars light, similar to the nice bright headlight. Um, if this were a number board per se, we might want to bring that down so it has that dim glow of a number board rather than a headlight. Um, again, the lighting effect that's available is simply um, a drop down menu and you can see all the ones that are here. Um, and each one will have its own characteristics. Here's a smoke unit that's controlled by, by sound. You know, maybe um, um, this would be like an ESU smoke unit um, that we can actually control by the sound that's playing within our sound schedule. Uh, here's some smooth smoke units. Um, uh, we, we have a coupler that we can control. We can turn this on to power pack, and I'll show you the power pack feature in just a moment. But we have lots of different lighting effects, and through firmware updates, you know, in the future, we might even add more. Who knows? Um, so, but for our example, we want this to be a Mars light. Um, we could have a function timeout. So basically, you've pressed the button, and after a little while, it'll turn itself off. In this case, we don't want that. Power off delay. This would be if you've pressed the button to turn it off, it will stay on for whatever period of time you set it to. Power on delay is just the opposite. You've pressed the button, but nothing will happen until this period of time expires that you've set it to. And we've already discussed the, the name of it. So I've, I've set all of my settings up for this physical output. And now if I go back to function mapping, what we can see here is that if the front light is on and we're going forward, that LED is going to be a front headlight. Well, and if F5 is on, we're talking to the same front light LED. So something else has to be done here. If we don't, uh, basically one is going to override the other. I believe it's the second one that's pressed, the most recent one that's pressed. So that can get a little confusing. So there's an easy way to basically demand that if one button is pressed versus the other, then that feature will be what we get. So in this case, we want to look and say, if F0 is pressed in forward, we use our drop down menu, we go to F5 and click off. Then if forward, if we're in the forward direction and F0 is pressed, but F5 is not pressed, then this is a front headlight. Now, if F5 is pressed, then this condition isn't true anymore because it's F, it's in forward and F0 is pressed, but it's F5 is pressed. So it nullifies this command because again, the condition's not true. And now it will only work as F5 is on and it is a Mars light in that case. It overrides the normal light. Um, to be a little more specific, this is probably, um, you know, maybe only in the direction of travel. So you could again set this to, sorry, wrong one, set this to forward. And now only in the forward direction will this be a Mars light. But again, um, if it doesn't matter if F0 is on. Now, um, you could also set this that F0, your headlight, had to be on first. So um, in this case, you would press F0 is on. So now it has to be in forward, F0 is on, and F5 is on. Then now your headlight will turn to a Mars light. So I hope that's clear. That's the difference between aux or uh, front light and front light one and front light two under our function output. So front light one, front light two. 
Now, the first four outputs, auxiliary outputs or physical outputs, um, have that feature of front light one, front light two, rear light one, rear light two, aux one, one, aux one, two, aux one, aux two, one, and aux two, two. Uh, once you get above that, uh, those there's only one option for that. So you do have four physical outputs that you can have those options with. We find that typically there's not much of a need to go any higher than that. So, um, you know, there's, there's other ways around that if you do want to get a little bit higher, but um, for the most part, this is what you would use. So I, I hope that's clear. Um, when you're setting up your, your physical outputs, they again, they are only things that your, um, your lighting uh, um, or electrically controlling through the decoder. Um, and they would all be function mapped through the physical outputs uh, column under the function mapping tab. So um, I hope that's clear. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us at support at And I, I hope that uh, you have some newfound uses and how you set up your lighting in your ESU decoders. So enjoy and uh, have fun.